In this video, you will use command line tools such as the Android Debug Bridge and Curl to diagnose and debug common problems with Android app links. In previous videos, you were introduced to deep links, shown their use cases, and walked through setting them up. In this video, I will cover some common problems you can face while creating Android app links, how to detect them, and how to solve them. The Play Console Deep Links page gives developers a single place to view and resolve many common issues with app links. The Deep Links page contains an analysis of your app and Deep Links so you can quickly identify issues at a glance. With the console, you get domain validation, glanceable issue reports, and code snippets to help resolve app link issues. After being notified of an issue in Play Console, you can follow these steps to quickly verify your improvements of Android app links. This video will show some command line tools to debug your Android app links before your next upload to the Play Console. As a reminder, Android app links are web links that are verified by your website to belong to your app. To get this verification, you need to both add a specific intent filter definition in your app's manifest file and publish an assetlinks.json file to your domain that appears in your Android app links. When a user navigates to one of your Android app links, it's open automatically in your app, not a browser. This video will continue with the Droid Food application from the previous video, which handles the links droidfood.example.com slash list and droidfood.example.com slash menu. You'll use the Android debug bridge and commands available in Android 12 to test and verify the link's configurations. Let's get started. Droid Food's Android app links are configured in its Android manifest.xml file. Before you begin debugging, you should check that these filters have all criteria for an Android app link. Each link requires the attribute auto verify equals true, an action element with the name attribute set to action view, a category element with the name attribute set to default, a second category element with the name attribute set to browsable, at least one data element with a scheme attribute of HTTP or HTTPS, and a host attribute which matches the domain associated with your deep links. Let's switch to the terminal and test the application using the Android debug bridge. Use ADB shell am start to check that the application can handle a deep link which is explicitly sent to it. The command tells the application to open the URL droidfood.example.com. Our application opens the link correctly. When a user clicks on a link, the system launches an implicit intent and finds the default handler for our deep link. Removing the package name from the previous command allows you to test which Android activity chooses to handle the implicit intent. The web browser has handled the request instead of the app, so you will need to debug this further. Our app can open links, but the Android operating system isn't using the app to open links. One reason this may happen is if the link's domains aren't verified. You can use the command adb shell pm get app links to check out the verification status of domains from the Android package manager in Android 12. The domain droidfood.example.com returns a legacy failure error. This value should be verified. It means that there is something wrong with our links configuration. By default, Android will only use our application to open a link if it is verified. Android uses the Digital Asset Links API to establish trust between a host and an app. In practice, this means that each web host corresponding to an app's intent filters in Android manifest.xml serves an assetlinks.json file in the host.wellknown top-level directory. The assetlinks.json file for HTTPS droidfood.example.com references the key beginning with 4CD7, but the signing key from PM get app links does not match this. We will need to replace it with the correct key. We have updated and re-uploaded our assetlinks.json file. We will use two ADB commands to verify that the file is correct now. ADB shell pm verify app links re-verify com.example.droidfood will perform verification on the file. ADB shell pm get app links com.example.droidfood will show us the verification status. Our links are now successfully verified. In this case, our asset links.json file was using the wrong key, but there may have been other problems and I will show you how to check for those. Hosting for assetlinks.json must meet several criteria. The host must serve the file using a secure HTTPS connection. Redirects may not be used to access the assetlinks.json file. The content type HTTP header of the file must be application slash JSON. And finally, assetlinks.json must be served publicly and cannot be behind authentication or a VPN. We can check each of these with the curl command. 
First, confirm that the file is hosted using HTTPS using curl as shown to load the file with a HTTPS scheme. If there is a connection error, this means that your file is most likely not hosted correctly. To confirm that the file is not hosted with a redirect, examine the headers returned by curl. Redirects are identified by an HTTP status code in the 300 range. For instance, a 302, as shown here, means that the file has been moved. This redirect will cause verification to fail. The content header returned by the server hosting the assetlinks.json file must be of the type application slash JSON. If your header is not application slash JSON, your file will fail verification. Corporate networks are often behind VPNs, which host content not available for the public. If your file is hosted on a VPN, then links that verify and testing at your office won't work for your users. Use a public network without a VPN connection to test that assetlinks.json is available from there. Finally, let's review the disambiguation dialog, which is shown when multiple installed applications can handle a deep link and there is not an application selected as a default handler. Beginning in Android 12, any intent filter for a web link that passes validation with the assetlinks.json file will be the default handler for the deep link and the disambiguation dialog will not appear. Before Android 12, however, if any intent filter failed validation, then all deep links your app supports will trigger the disambiguation dialog. It is very important to validate your links with the command adb shell pm get app links. If you have multiple intent filters that can handle the same deep link, this can cause the disambiguation dialog to appear. Verify your intent filters do not have overlapping deep links by testing your links using the adb shell am start command from earlier. It is also possible for the user to select a different application to be the default link handler. If your app detects it is not the default link handler for its links, you should prompt the user to update their settings so your application can handle its own deep links. You can find more information and a code sample for detecting default link handlers on developer.android.com. After you complete these steps, you can be more confident that users will navigate directly to your app without seeing the disambiguation dialog. We hope that you have learned some useful techniques for solving common problems with deep links in Android. To see other content about deep links, check out the Deep Links Videos series Crash Course playlist in the Android Developer channel on YouTube. If you found this video helpful, please leave a like or a comment below. Thank you for watching.